Hey, my lovely Willow Vibes Tribe members. I am Jessica from Willow Vines Intuitive Vibes, and I'm here to do, it's a dream share, and probably, I don't know, maybe a little mini reading, because I got some cards out. And we'll just go from there with this one, and then I'll get into the daily vibe in a different video. I've got a few things to do today. But anyways, please a like, 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 comment, share, and subscribe. Stick around. Hope you do stay. Love it if you would. I have openings for personals, emails in the box below, and if you're waiting on a personal, um, it's coming. My phone's been active funny lately when it comes to service and stuff, so I gotta, I gotta figure that out, but, um, I don't know what's going on, so it's taking longer for stuff to upload, and I only have a certain amount of storage space and stuff. So I'm figuring, well, hopefully I'll have that sorted out today because it's driving me crazy. But anywho, regardless of that, today is the 25th, August 25th, Thursday. So, the dream, which, I don't know, I've already processed some of it. I'm like, because I woke up, it felt so real. Like, I literally could feel the different aspects in the dream. It's crazy when that happens because a lot of times, you know, you you don't really feel pain or anything in a dream. Oh, I was feeling, I was feeling it all right. But anywho, it's, it sounds a little twisted, but it makes perfect sense to me, I'm just saying. So what does it mean to you? We'll see. All right, so it started off, I was driving up north. That's what I was gonna do, I was gonna, I don't know if I was going to Holton or not, but that popped in my head that the name of that town, which is, you know, that's almost up near Canada and stuff. But anyways, I'm like, I'm driving up north and I was on the highway and stuff, but I really wasn't on the road very long in the dream. It was just, it was weird because I came to this intersection and I knew I had to turn and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting because the traffic was just ridiculous. And I'm like, how many cars are on the damn road, especially up here? You know what I mean? Because I had already reached my destination, but I'm like, what the fuck? Because every time it, the road would look clear, I would go, I'd be like, oh, clear this way. Oh, it'd be like clear on the right. And then I'd look to the left, it'd be clear. And then I'd look back and then there'd be a whole line of cars again. And I'm like, it's like a never ending cycle of traffic. And I was like, you know, fuck this, they can wait. And <laughs> I pulled out in front of everyone. I was like, well, hopefully it don't hit me. <laughs> and, <coughs> like, I'm going to cut everyone off. That's maybe that, maybe you're cutting people off in life. I know I am. Just depends on how you treat me and whatever. But I'm like, I'm cutting everyone off. Screw it. And then right as I turned onto the road, there was like another turn. And it didn't look like it went to a road. It literally looked like it went to like, a sidewalk or a walking path. It was like a sidewalk. And I'm like, well, this road's stupid. I don't know how to, <laughs> I'm not gonna leave my car in the middle of the road and start walking. So I just drove over it. And <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting through this crap, you know? So I just drove over it and ended up um, pulling into a parking lot, like of a, of a business. I never, I never saw what the business was in the dream. It was just a business and I knew that if I pulled into this parking lot, I could go through, I don't know, I could go through it out back near the dumpster area or whatever and get to the, the place that I was looking for, get to the house because I was going to stay up there or something. So I'm driving through the, the business parking lot. I go out back and the house that I was driving to was... It, it was a house, but it looked like a business. And that's kind of what my house is. And that you can literally do that. But there's another location in my head where you can do that too, but you don't go to a house. But um, it's just the symbolism of it all. It's like, huh, yeah, because that's literally what it looks like. And you can literally do that in real life at where I am. But anyways, um, I did that and I pulled in. Yeah, because this part, I pulled it, I went inside, and I said hi to two guys that were in there. And in my head, I was like, 
they were gay guys, but they weren't a couple, they weren't together or anything like that. So it could just be a representation of, you know, people, maybe, maybe people say that to each other, like, oh, you're so gay, you know, which just means odd. Well, queer means odd, gay means happy. So there might've been two happy dudes. <laughs> but anyways, regardless of that, because they weren't a couple or anything, like, I don't know, I've never seen them before, but in the dream at least, and they could be stand-ins, you never know. But I wasn't worried about them for some reason. It was just like, I'm, I'm here, whatever. So I, I was gonna go to my room and <coughs> the room I was gonna stay in, cause it wasn't my room. It was just the room I stayed in, I guess. And I was going to walk to it and I go to open the door and one of the guys goes, don't, don't go in there. There's been a toad. There's like a bullfrog. It was a bullfrog. I've been hopping around this place. We finally got it cornered in the, in the room. And if you open the door, you're going to let it out. And I'm like, too late. <laughs> Cause as, <laughs> as I'm going, why I'm opening the door. <laughs> so I'm opening the door at the same time as I'm asking the question. And yep, sure as shit, there's a fucking bullfrog in there. And that fucking thing was massive. And I'm just like, okay. Um, and then it jumped at me. And the way it jumped, it was almost like in the movie, The Mask, where he bounces off him stuff. That's what this bullfrog was doing. It was like, boing, 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 boing. We're going everywhere. I'm like, how the fuck are we going to catch this? And it's like a ping pong game or fucking... Um, I don't know arcade game what the fuck why can't I think of it it's not ping pong <laughs> whatever one of those um the ball bounces everywhere so anyways that's what the toad was doing and I was like oh, well that sucks so I go in my in the room and unpack or whatever put my stuff in there and when I came back out um I saw it in the kitchen and then and I started bouncing around again and a dude, the dude on the couch caught it. Like it bounced at him and he caught it. And I'm staring at the guy on the couch, which I don't know who he was. <coughs> and he's holding it. And I'm like, he seemed mean. Like he wanted to squeeze it or something. Like he wanted to hurt it. And I was like, why are you gonna hurt it? Just let it go or something, you know, like just get it out of the house basically. And all of a sudden he loses his grip. I sat down beside him and he lost his grip. That's what it was. It was like, oh, I can't hold on to this now because you're, you're sitting here. I can't like, I can't do that. So then the bullfrog fucking leaps off his lap and he went to stand up and then all of a sudden it hit me in the chest and the bullfrog went boom. Like it hit hard. It felt like somebody like when you're playing a game, a kickball or something, they just nail you, like, close range or something. I was just like, oh. And then this little shit had claws. And I could feel it. They were like little needle claws. And it was like sinking its little needle claws into me. And I'm like, ow. It really hurt. And I was, I was still wasn't mad at the damn frog, though. I'm like, why? This hurts. This hurts. What do I do? Because I didn't want to touch it because it was slimy and stuff. Because in real life, I don't touch stuff like that but I'll look at them like they don't scare me or anything and I wasn't afraid of it in the dream I was just like I ended up touching it because it hurt so bad I was like all right you're hurting me what the fuck and the second I put my hands on the bullfrog he turned into a person <laughs> he turned into Kyle Gass from Tenacious D and he was talking funny like in the movies and stuff <laughs> but anyways like it was almost like he was Buddha I don't know but he was like yes wise one <laughs> like you what did he say to me he goes you always knew it was me or you always knew yeah I think he said you always knew it was me and I was like yeah of course I did and he was basically telling me that I could speak to the animals and stuff and that 
he trusted me because he knew I wasn't going to hurt him. But he didn't trust the man because he, he goes, I felt threatened around this man. But I trust you. And... <coughs> And I was like, okay. And then all of a sudden he disappeared. So I was like, I guess that one trusts me. I don't know who he represents or whatever, but you know, the pick of destiny. So maybe, well, maybe that has something to do with it. But anyways, it's weird how sometimes our, our brains put different people <laughs> in there. But anyways, so I was talking to the bullfrog and he was, I wasn't the problem is what he was telling me basically, but the man was, or the men, I don't know, because there was only one that was significant. Because the other dude I knew was there, he was around, I just never really saw him. Like I kind of, like out of the corner of your eye, it's like when you know someone's around, you just, and you're only seeing one person. So that could be going on. I mean, hell, that could be like when someone's listening in or spying and stuff because you can literally be talking face to face with somebody and if somebody else is listening or a, their energy is around or if they're just projecting it onto you, whichever. But so anyways, the dream goes from that to I was in, I was back in the bedroom and originally there was another girl there and she had she was wearing my new clothes and like there was an outfit or a pair of pants or something that were new to me and she she put them on and I was like those are mine and she's like oh I just wanted to wear them I'm not gonna it's fine you know so I'm not gonna hurt nothing or whatever and I'm like yeah okay whatever I don't care so then when I went into the room she had left and everything there was some new some new clothes in there, but they weren't mine. They were hers or something. I don't know. I don't know whose they were. That's not the significance of this. It was these tank tops. They they stood out to me in the dream, like the colors. A Bob Seger one with a sunset behind his head because it was a picture of his face, and it was white. And I was like, oh, I like this. I think my daughter was sitting beside me when I was picking out clothes. I'm not sure because I was talking to somebody and it wasn't one of the men in the dream. But anyways, um, I'm like, oh, I like this. I'm going to keep that one. And then I picked up another one. And it was it was a yellow one. It was the Beach Boys. I was like, oh, these are all like music, you know. And I was kind of excited. And then the other ones were ACDC. They weren't like, I don't know, they were just ACDC. One was purple. And one was black and the pictures on the ACDC ones were all distorted like almost they looked like Tim Burton type images kind of creepy but trippy in a, in a sense it kind of looked like uh, an abstract like you could see like two images of like probably Sal Jack and Sally but it was all swirly and you couldn't really make out anything else on it and it's like why would those images be on the ACDC t-shirts, but whatever, that was significant. They were kind of creepy. So I'm like, hmm, there's creepy ones over here. I was really drawn to the Bob Seger ones. I don't know, that was my favorite. But anywho, besides that, I'm looking at them. They're all brand new and I'm folding them up and like put setting them aside. I'm like, I'll wear them another day. I can't wear them right now because I got shit to do. And I ended up outside and I don't know how the hell I got out there or anything it just the dream switched and I was walking beside my ex <coughs> beside one of them <coughs> and I was wearing my Columbia winter boots and it wasn't winter time it was like I don't know if you'd say it was like spring. I don't know. It'd been wet and rainy, which it really has been lately, but like springtime, there's puddles everywhere and whatever. And I never wear those boots in real life because they're way too heavy. Like they're clunky and they're hard to walk in and whatever. They're warm, but they're hard to walk in. And I said that in a dream. I'm like, oh, I've only ever worn these boots twice but they're hard to walk because they're hard to walk in but they've got rubber around the base so my feet won't get wet it's like a, a level of protection but it wasn't a lot of protection it was just you know how boots are winter boots 
because they weren't full rubber boots. <coughs> and um, <clears throat> so I'm walking and or trying to walk and <laughs> even though I had the rubber on, there was like a little stream and I, I stepped over it and I'm like, why am I stepping over this stuff? I, I have, I have rubber boots on. <laughs> like I can, I'm fine. But I'm like walking over everything. Like I don't want to get wet or anything. I don't want to get dirty or fall in. I don't know. And they were just tiny puddles. And I even said that to my ex and I was like, why am I being so cautious? Cause I'm good. I got good boots. So anywho, I fucking keep walking and then the puddle got bigger. There was another puddle and it got bigger. And then my ex pointed over and there was like a bridge. He like, he didn't say anything. He just pointed and I looked and I was like, oh, well I can go on the bridge or stand on the wood because it didn't look like a bridge at first. It almost looked like somebody had just put like wood down, you know, when you cross so that you don't step in a puddle basically is what it was and that's what it kind of looked like but he pointed and I was like oh that'd be so much easier so that's what I did and I'm balancing on it I'm like I don't want to fall in even though I didn't see any water under it at first and then all of a sudden those planks turned into a bridge and it was it was a nice bridge actually and I'm like oh I felt more confident because it looked like it just been built and I wasn't gonna fall through or anything like that so I'm like, all right, so I'm just walking and he was beside me, but he was on tar in a parking lot and I was on a bridge over water. So it was almost like two separate locations. But so I'm walking and I'm all like, Doo -doo 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 -doo. you know, I'm good. And then I look, I look down and I could see in the cracks of the bridge that the water was rising. And I'm like, that water is getting kind of deep, isn't it? And I was like, pretty soon the bridge ain't even going to be here anymore. You know and then I was like all right well I'll just keep walking I'll get off the damn bridge so I'm looking straight ahead and not down and um, all of a sudden the bridge got dilapidated there was holes in it and like it was falling apart and I look and I, I looked right in the nick of time because I almost I almost fell through the bridge and I was like oh crap I almost fell through this fucking thing so I climbed <laughs> I sidestepped that and ended up in the parking lot walking beside him again, my ex. And we're just walking in the parking lot like it's a grocery store because I think we're headed back to the car or something. And all of a sudden, no warning, because I don't think he said anything in the street. No, he didn't. No warning. The puddle I stepped in, it was like flood water. It went all the way up to my chest. And I was like, oh, the boots aren't gonna save me now. <laughs> the boots are submerged. <laughs> so I'm just like kind of wading through the water and it was crappy water. It was like, it's never good to see murky waters in a dream. So I was basically tit deep in fucking some shitty emotion, someone's emotions, cause they weren't mine. I don't know, it was like, what the fuck did I get myself into? <laughs> but it's like, it's almost like being in too deep, but not in over your head because it wasn't over my head. It was just, it wasn't easy trudging through that shit, just seeing. So anyways, I make it to the other side and I'm like, well now I'm soaking wet, what the fuck? I was like, that, oh well. And I wasn't mad about it, I was just like, I guess I gotta go over change. And then, um, because my ex had walked through the water too, but he had like firefighter pants on. So he had a level of protection because even though he trudged through the water, he didn't get wet. So it's almost like I, did, I wasn't protected through the process and he was or something, or whoever I was representing <coughs> wasn't protected because I never saw myself. So it's, it's almost like looking through the eyes of someone else, but I don't know, he's putting groceries in the car when, in his fire gear, when I finally made it out of the water. And that was it. I never made it to the car. I just saw him. That was it. So that was that dream. 
I don't know, I just wanted to share it, but it was kind of kind of weird because I was talking about different bridges and I've had other dreams with bridges and stuff. It's like the bridge over troubled water. Careful, because I almost fucking fell in. <laughs> just saying. The signs are with you already. And I saw a dilapidated bridge too, remember? I don't know if you guys had seen that one where I was out by the muddy river and it's a four-wheeler bridge. But it's fucking got holes in it, just saying. You are here for a reason. Don't fuck it up. You're loved. You are being shady. Watch out. Shit could get ugly. Yeah, it really could. Especially with the murky waters. I don't know what the fuck that's all about, but don't believe every shitty thought you have. It's an internal thing, because like I would... I've explained before in dreams, you want the crystal clear blue waters and stuff when you, when you see water, when you're submerged in it, especially, um, when it's muddy and you can't see the bottom and it's murky and whatever, those are like suppressed emotions or not so good emotions. So it could be depression, you know, things like that or bad intentions. <coughs> Someone could be overthinking a situation. Could also be that putting thoughts in your head, trying to make, trying to scare someone. Thoughts can be sneaky, lying bastards. That's why you listen to your heart and not your head. I wonder if that's why the water only came up to my chest. Like, basically, my heart wasn't in the water, neither was my head. It was just... The rest of my body is like wading through muck, but it didn't affect me because it didn't. I didn't even care. I didn't even feel cold or nothing. I was just like, oh, my clothes are wet. Whoops. That sucks. Like, you know, like, like that wasn't a fun experience. I do really don't want to do it again, but I didn't, I came out unscathed is what it is what it feels like to me like that's what the dream is so don't believe every single thought that's in your head which I, I don't feel like most of you do anyways yeah so we have the high priestess as the main energy which surprise surprise you know I'm just gonna pull a couple cards and then end this one because I want to do the daily vibe and I gotta get situated for the day got to finish building the wall. <laughs> I wonder if I will get it done today. I don't know. It depends on how long I work for. If I can find me some good rocks, you know what I mean? Because there's a bunch of, I don't know, it's like, it's like a little puzzle when you're building a wall and you gotta make sure they fit together just right. Otherwise you're not gonna have a sturdy base. So that's the hardest part is getting the base and the sides up. But anyways, with a rock wall, that's what I'm building. The Magician and the Two of Wands. Someone might be confused by the thoughts that they're having. I'm just saying like, what's true and what's not? Who's me and who's you? Or especially if you deal with telepathic communication. But besides that, it's almost, I feel a, little, a level of confusion. Like, what do I do here? Someone's allowing their insecurities in their past to um, fog them up, basically. Someone is being shady. They're being manipulative. Someone could be manipulating a high priestess, even. Trying to block someone's intuition. I was just talking about building a freaking wall, you know? Don't worry. You are loved. You're loved by the divine, your ancestors, and people around you, even if they don't show it. Um... Oh, there's another card here. I didn't even see it. Yeah, even if they don't show it. I feel like some of you might feel excluded from friends and family or like black sheep mentality. But you're loved. And I feel like a lot of you are happy on your own anyways. Like you're finding a level of fulfillment without anybody else. But it's always nice to know that we have, you know, we have people around that care. Someone's also turning their back on a family situation, turning their back on their family. 
someone could feel that way. You know, like a lot of times when you start doing things for yourself and, you know, living your life and whatever, just making shit happen for you, people can, low vibrational people, people who don't understand or don't care, can view your success, your forward movement, um, the fact that you're focusing on yourself. They, they, they can look at it as you being selfish or you're turning your back on on all of us. You're turning your back on your friends, on your family, on whatever, because you know, because you're not up their ass anymore or you're not allowing them to to do what they've always done. So if people have walked all over you, taken advantage of you, whatever that is, and it was they were fine with it, of course they were, if they're being manipulative. If you're not allowing that and you're setting healthy boundaries, these people are viewing you as though you're the problem. You've turned your back on them. Well, take a look in the mirror and ask yourself fucking why. You know, why aren't you walking beside me? Why are you way back there? You know what I mean? Because that has nothing to do with whoever is focused on themselves. That has everything to do with whoever's butthurt. And there is someone who's a little butthurt, just gonna say. You turned your back on us. There's also someone here where <coughs> it's almost like Get out of your head. Do what makes you happy because um, someone's overthinking a situation. Like, if I, if I go towards what I want, who I want, it might upset the family or something. It might upset a family situation. It's like my family will turn their backs on me. Something like that. Four wants. If your family turns their back on you, they're obviously not that supportive. There is a partnership coming in. Yeah, it's about forward movement. Someone's trying to stop your forward movement while you're sitting there manifesting it. Dreams do come true. And then we have love. Love. Love will keep us together. Anyways. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Sometimes love ain't enough because we have betrayal here. Tell you there are some people who are butthurt about a partnership. Maybe a secret partnership. It's like when you when you look at me, all I see is him or something. Like someone knows that when you're looking into their eyes that you're thinking of someone else. That's what this is. And they feel butthurt about it. Um, well if you're in a partnership thinking of someone else, you might wanna get right with yourself. I don't know, there's a page of pentacles who either feels betrayed or is betraying someone. Might even be a child for some of you. But this one, he just doesn't want to go away. This one just doesn't want to go away. He just keeps poking out. So we'll see what's up with that bastard in a minute. Um, I heard, follow your heart, listen to your heart. If you're worried about money, don't be, because things are turning around. Your stability is going to be fine. Things are in, in motion is what I just heard. What's up with this page of pentacles? Why does he keep coming out? He or she could be a female, too. I just heard, I'm sorry I turned my back on you. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry I walked away from you. I'm sorry I turned my back on you. Someone could have just, yeah, that's friendly energy. So we have the page of wands too, but it's like, I don't know. It looks like he's trying to figure something out because that pentacle almost looks similar to the moon. It's like, I'm trying to figure something out. I'm trying to figure you out. I'm trying to figure out why you walked away from me. Something like that. That Someone could be thinking that, but it's almost like, well, this person is like looking at something like, what is going on? You're like, peace, figure it out on your own. <laughs> I don't know, that's what it feels like. What is with this sneaky crap? I'm sick of the Seven of Swords, I really am. But, let's see, someone could have been... This isn't hiding your emotions, because there's no emotions in this. I'm just saying, with the Ten of Wands, the Seven of Swords, and the King of Swords, it could be a Gemini involved, but not necessarily... This is kind of being cold. You know, it's, it's, the King of Swords is, is very intelligent. 
strategic, you know, I only say certain things at certain times, whatever, like they're all up in their head and it says, you know, don't believe every shitty thought you have basically. So maybe there's a King of Swords individual that needs to get out of their fucking head. But this sneaky person, whoever the hell the Seven of Swords energy is, because it's not the King of Swords. It's like, haha, I got y'all confused. I got y'all pissed off, whatever. But this one's walking right into... It's not a trap. It's like burdens, heavy burdens. A lot of work. And this person doesn't see all the work that they're going to have to do. What's the work? I'm going to have to do a lot of work. Heading into a situation they can't handle, whoever that is. After messing with somebody else, like, oh, I got you all up in your head, haha, uh -huh. fuck you. And now they're going, oh no, or they will be, because I don't feel like, I don't feel like this person sees all the, sees all this pain, sees, uh, this person does not see what's coming. They could be walking into a trap, like, oh, haha. Uh -huh. I made you do that and now you're fucked. Um, this person's going to have to live with what they did and what they said. And I don't think that that's going to be very easy for them. Huh. Because this hurts. I don't know. This hurts. The Five of Swords. Yeah. I just heard you walking away really hurts. So someone doesn't want you to walk away, but I mean, if they're fucking stabbing you in the back and doing all that bad shit, um, you had every right to walk away. But anyways, that's what I have for you guys. Um, yeah, I don't know. Someone needs to stop obsessing. Get out of your head. Clear your head. Believe what you see. Believe what people show you. I'm just saying. Not always what they say, but what they show you. Face reality or live in fucking la-la land. Choose bravely. <laughs> you know? Believe what you see you need to see to believe, there you go. I don't know. But you're loved either way. Peace. Talk to you later.